Am I the a-hole for blowing up at my husband for lying to me about my sister and her baby leaving when he actually kicked her out? My sister Twenty got out of a terrible relationship and moved in with me and my husband and brought her five-month-old son. She's dealing with a handful of issues, from PPD to depression. I asked my husband if he'd be okay with her moving in, and he said, absolutely. Not just this, but he was the one who picked her slash brought her home. She stayed for two weeks and helped around the house. My husband started complaining about the baby crying, but a newborn is expected to cry especially at night. He said it causes him stress, although I suggested he put on earbuds. He suddenly told me to forget it, and so I did. Last week, I had to go out of town to attend a friend's funeral without my husband. He said he wanted to stay with my sister to make sure she's okay. I returned home the next day and didn't find her or her baby home. My husband said she contacted a friend in another town and wanted to move in with them and left that morning. He handed me a letter he claimed was from her. This felt odd, especially after reading the letter. I called her phone many, many times, but turned out my husband found it and said she must have left it behind. I was worried. I had no means of contacting her to make sure she was okay. I contacted relatives, but they knew nothing. Then yesterday, I got a call from an unknown number and it was her. We talked and she told me that she didn't leave on her own, but my husband kicked her out after telling her that she was no longer welcome and she needed to take responsibility for her decisions. I was shocked as she explained that she's not with a friend, but at a shelter and she has no money. I waited till he got home and I blew up at him. He admitted he faked the letter and hid her phone then argued that it's his house too and he has a say. But he shouldn't have lied to me about my sister and causing her to be homeless. He said I was being unfair and wrong to lash out at him for wanting peace in his home. I went upstairs and refused to argue anymore. I told him I'm going to pick her up tomorrow and he said he'd change the locks while I'm gone and I won't be allowed to bring her home. I'm thinking of going to a hotel, but he kept saying that I'm letting my sister affect our lives by prioritizing her. But there's a baby involved, my nephew, and I can't leave him homeless. I get that it is his house too, but I don't see why it's so against her staying. Now for the top comments before the little update. Not day haul. He waited until you were out of town so that you couldn't object. So that you couldn't protect her as he not only kicked her out, but took her freaking phone so she couldn't contact you. He is a dangerous man. He threw a woman and her newborn onto the street without a care in the freaking world. Now he is threatening to lock you out of your own house? You need to divorce him immediately. This. He left a young mother and her young infant on the street and without protection because he was losing a little sleep and stressed. Now he is threatening to evict you from your own home? This is abhorrent. Bring her and the nephew back. Consult an attorney and get him out ASAP. He targeted a victim of an awful relationship for further mistreatment. Very freaking methodically. He timed this move for when her one advocate was out of town and then crafted multiple, elaborate layers of deception to make sure you could not contact each other and get her out of yet another one safe situation he'd forced her into. Now he wants Opie to be homeless too. Like many spouses of abusive men, Opie's probably grappling with the instinct to show far more consideration for his feelings and basic needs than he would ever, ever show for hers. This man is not your family member. This man is a threat to both of them. Divorce this man. OMG. He went behind your back to do this to your loved one. He even faked a letter and hid her phone from you. This is completely out of proportion to anything that happened. This was unwarranted cruelty and a breach of trust. GTFO of that relationship. He will absolutely repeat that behavior. Not stay home. He stole her phone. And sent her to a homeless shelter with no phone. Like, I don't know anyone's numbers. If someone took my phone and sent me to a homeless shelter, I'd basically be stuck there forever because I'd never be able to call someone to help. It's super lucky Opie's sister was even able to get in contact. Little update. He returned home and we started arguing again. I couldn't take it anymore. And I'm going to stay at a hotel for tonight. I'm leaving in an hour or so. He is wanting to talk again now, but I'm incredibly overwhelmed and stressed out and need some time by myself. 
I don't care if he's going to change the locks or not. I'm working on meeting up with my sister as soon as possible so we can talk more openly about what happened and hopefully try and figure something out. Next story. Am I the a-hole for making inappropriate noises when my mother-in-law called my husband's phone at 2 a.m.? My husband Kevin and I got married months ago and ever since we moved away, his mom has started calling more often. She had a mental breakdown when she heard we were moving. She begged we stay near because she needs him, though her two older sons are there. Anyhow, she'd call at random times then started calling in the middle of the night, specifically at 2 a.m. I thought that was so weird, but she said she wanted to hear Kevin's voice but was too busy to call during the day. Kevin responds to her call every time, saying he's worried there might be an emergency. It's exhausting and completely ruins our alone time. I asked her to call at like 10, but no, she kept calling at 2 a.m. Kevin said he can't bring himself to ignore her calls and ask that I be patient. Last night, I decided I wasn't having it. I waited till Kevin was asleep and put his phone on vibrate and waited for her to call. Two o'clock rolls around and the phone starts vibrating on a nightstand. I stretch my arm to answer and then I start making bedroom noises from the bed. I'm talking full on moaning and then some dirty talk then moaning. Few seconds in and she ends the call. Kevin wakes up and asks if I was alright. I tell him it's just a fever then he goes back to sleep. I woke up to a complete disaster with Kevin angrily asking what the heck I did last night when his mom called. Clearly, she was livid and mortified because Kevin said I just traumatized her by having her think we were doing it when she called. I told him what I did and insisted it was just out of frustration, but I said I shouldn't have done that and embarrassed him and made his mom uncomfortable. I said she was calling at 2 a.m. He said still I acted childishly and potentially harmed his relationship with her. I told him to just tell her I was behind this. I just said, oh, don't worry about it, I will. Then demanded I apologize to her immediately. But her shaming texts made me refuse. I might have gone about this the wrong way, but I was just frustrated, that's all. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Was it childish? Absolutely. But so is she. However, the biggest problem here isn't your mother-in-law, it's your husband. Not the a-hole. They seem to have a codependent relationship and you're stuck in the middle. He says you made his mom uncomfortable. Always being woke up at 2 a.m. isn't comfortable for you either, OP. The above post is spot on. Your husband is the problem. There is a reason sleep deprivation is considered torture. The others are right though, you have a husband problem. Maybe he needs to sleep elsewhere so that when mommy calls, to make sure that umbilical cord is still attached but you're not disturbed. Exactly. If my mom were doing this, I would put a stop to it. I was on a business trip a few years ago, and my mom called around 3.30-4 a.m., which for her was 6.30-7 a.m. She was mortified when she was told what time it was where I was. She hadn't thought about a time difference. This is purposeful in the middle of the night, and the husband, if he wants to keep a wife, needs to put a stop to it. Everyone sucks here. You're aiming your anger at the wrong person. If your husband didn't answer, you wouldn't be waking up every night at 2 because of his mother. You have a husband issue, not a mother-in-law issue. And the more you're going to do that kind of silliness, the more he's going to treat you like a child and like you're the problem. You need couples counseling. She has both. Yes, if her husband didn't answer, you bet your bottom dollar the mother-in-law would keep calling and calling and calling that nobody would get any sleep. Not stay home. I probably wouldn't have made those noises, but I probably would have asked her to please not call at 2 a.m. since her pansy son won't do it. Sorry you married a mama's boy and not a man. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for turning my husband's gaming room into an office? My husband is out of job, he has been for months now and doesn't have any money because he spent it all in gaming gears and animals. I'm the breadwinner right now and recently was given a work from home job. We have two kids that understandably make a lot of noise, so there's not a quiet spot in the house except a bedroom. But my husband refused to let me work from there and said that one, it makes me look unprofessional and two, he doesn't want to be restricted from his space. I asked if he'd let me take his gaming room and turn it into an office temporarily, but he said no. I had a fight with him and ended up moving his gaming stuff into the bedroom. 
He found out and lost his temper. I told him he left me no choice, especially after I offered a compromise to share the room. But since the place at random times he said no, he kept yelling at me, calling me irresponsible and a dictator. I firmly told him that this is part of the house. That is my space too. But he said, no, no, no. Your space is the kitchen. This pushed me to lash back at him and he left. But said by the time he got back, everything needed to be put back. He came home drunk, so I don't want to fight with him. He then kept ranting about wanting his room back even after I tried to convince him to play in the bedroom all he wants. Yet he's not having it and wants the atmosphere his gaming room has. Am I the a-hole for this or is he being unreasonable? I'll give him back the room if it turns out that I'm the a-hole. Edited to add for some clarification. A. When he said my space is the kitchen, I think what he meant is that I control everything there. From decoration to appliances, and I spent more time there compared to him. B. He used to contribute in a lot of things when he had a job. He used to pay for the kids' needs and handle bills and groceries. He makes sure to remind me about how much he used to do every day and tends to bring it up in every argument. He's not happy with losing his job, but circumstances are uncontrollable. Now for the top comments. Not today, ho. Huh? Can't work in your room. Can't work in his gaming room. The kids need to be taken care of. Saying you belong in the kitchen is such a degrading comment. I hope things improve for you both. Honestly, it's tiring having to even fight about this. I have offered more than compromise, but he wasn't having any of it. I get that his gaming room is his personal space that he worked hard to create, but I wouldn't have done this if circumstances were different. You could put a stove plus a bed in the gaming room and you take the bedroom, which he's no longer allowed in. He'd probably agree to that. I mean, it really is more comfortable having your own bed. Not day ho. A space for working trumps an entire space for playing video games. Besides, while you're working, he's taking care of the kids and housework since he's unemployed, right? Agreed. But with as pig-headed as he is about losing his game room, I don't see helping Opie with the kids or housework without constant nagging at a possible fight. Dude went out and got drunk because he couldn't hide away in his dedicated game room anymore. Sounds like teenager attitude to me. No, no, no. Your space is the kitchen. This sealed the deal for me. You're raising three kids. I'm a gamer myself, but if I were a stay-at-home dad, I'd be doing everything to make it easier for her while looking for a damn job. Then bro said your space is the kitchen? I have no words. Might want to evaluate your marriage with this guy. Not saying divorce, actually I kinda am, but this dude needs a lesson. NTA, NTA, NTA. He actually said that in comparison to the gaming room. He pointed out how I control everything in the kitchen for decorations to time spent in it. But I don't think it's the same because he just doesn't want to spend time in the kitchen. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for taking a major financial decision without the input of my fiancé? This is going to be a long post with a lot of background info, so please bear with me. Before I, 32 male, was born, my mom found out that my bio father was cheating. They started on the divorce proceedings before she found out she was expecting. When she told him, he said that was impossible since he was infertile and she must have cheated. He asked for a paternity test, but she was emotionally exhausted and now suspects he was abusive but she never told me so. So she asked instead that he sign away his parental rights since he was so sure that it wasn't his. Then she moved in with my grandparents. When I was 14, I asked her about him and I wanted a full story. She told me what I wrote above, and me, being the immature teen boy that I was, threatened to run away unless she contacted him. I thought then that she was just being petty, and that if I had proof I was his kid, he would be a dad. When she did, he sent this really hurtful letter to both of us, calling her a lot of names that makes my blood boil, and accusing her of trying to bleed him dry of his money. That was the day I decided that I don't need him at all. Fast forward to about eight months ago, I guess he had a near-death experience and tried to contact my mom to apologize for what he did. Of course, she refused, but he managed to get a picture of me, and I'm like his clone. He contacted me saying that he was wrong and immature, and that he wanted to get to know the only kid he had in his life, but I refused. Then he started trying to bribe me to interact with him, offering to pay for my student loans, offering to get me a house, inviting me on expensive trips, 
and I refused everything. I told my fiancé, female 29, everything, and she was supportive at first. Then she started to urge me to get him to pay off our loans and help us to get a home. I refused categorically. It is relevant to mention that due to the pandemic, we have a lot of debt, and we delayed our wedding just to pay some of it down. I got fed up and asked him to meet. Then I told him that I will never accept a cent from him. And if it tried to contact me again, I would be calling the cops and be doing my best to get a restraining order. When I told my fiancé, she exploded on me. Said that me making that big a financial decision without consulting her showed her just how controlling and selfish I am. Now she left and won't answer my calls. So am I the a-hole? P.S. First, thank you all. I have read every single comment. Second, since I've seen it a lot in the comments, we are not in a desperate situation. The debt we decided to pay was all credit card debt, less than $6,000. And we are not planning to pay for our wedding by borrowing. That's why we decided to postpone it so we can save for it. We are currently in all our bills and are paying extra for the credit card and saving for our wedding at the same time. Not day home. This isn't a big financial decision. This is you squaring away family affairs and making it damn clear about a relationship with a man you do not want. Your fiancé seems more interested in milking the situation of money rather than giving a damn about how you feel. Good riddance, she's left, I'd say. Exactly. Not day hall and you've just learned a valuable lesson. Your fiancé is manipulating you for financial gain without any regard for your feelings. She just showed you her true colors. To be honest, the more I think about it, the more I'm appalled by her behavior. She left in an attempt to manipulate you and guilt you into taking money from a possibly abusive person. She has no problem exposing you to a toxic relationship if it means she'll get money out of it. It seems like she doesn't really care about you. I read plenty of stories here where people were encouraged to get money from their horrible parents to at least get something out of a bad situation. Usually minors who need it to not get financially stunted. But Opie is an adult that has the liberty of not resorting to these kinds of measures. Regardless, this is the kind of decision that a person has to make individually. Whether the money is worth the trauma and the only input a partner should have in it is supporting their person through a tough situation. I want to give Opie's fiancé the benefit of the doubt. It sounds like they were offered a life-changing amount of money, the kind that blinds people. It doesn't make the reaction okay, but it is something that could possibly be worked through. Either way, I'm sorry Opie has been put through this type of situation. 